Hello everyone and welcome back. So we are now going to be covering document flow, static position, relative, absolute. So let's start with the document flow. This is basically just a fancy term in order to describe the default natural order of HTML elements. So if you start adding h1, h2, paragraph, button, their looks, their default layout, their default font style, margin and padding is just part of the document flow. All right, so that's the idea of the document flow. All right, so now static position. So it's basically just part of the document flow. This is the default position of element on the page as well. It's like without an intervention, without influencing the layout using CSS or the style attribute, the normal position as soon as you start adding an element it's just the default position value of any HTML element. So basically, we're going to be focusing on these two, relative and absolute. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm pulling up my VS Code over here. I'm going to click Open Folder, heading over to my desktop. And in this folder where we have created all of our projects since the start of this series. So I'm just going to be naming this uh, CSS uh, Positioning. Uh, underscore one. I'm going to click this uh, button, select that folder, right click here and type our file index.html, generate our HTML template over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to be create just boxes. Okay. So the first div, we're going to name this static box. Uh, okay. And uh, we're going to put here a text static box as well. So we would know which one is which. And the other one is going to be relative. So relative box. And we're also going to name it here relative box. And now we go over here for the style tag. So let's target first the static box. Uh, we can just basically copy this and then period over here, paste, open and curly brackets. And we're going to set a height of 100 pixels, both height and width. And we are going to set the background color for the meantime red. Right click here and open with live server. And we should be able to see a box like so. So the other element here, the other div don't have yet a shape. Let's ignore that for now. So right now, this is the normal document flow. It is where, where it is expected to be by default, the normal flow of the document. And it is the default positioning without having to write like a position property here. You don't have to do that. That is the static position. So if you are going to add here an H1 with a content ABC, this one is by default in static position. All right, so let me delete that one. And let's go ahead and target the relative box over here. And we type here a period, paste the name. And basically we're going to copy this and we will just change the color to blue. All right, so right now it's not yet a relative box because we still have to use the property position. As you can see over here, uh, we can just click that. Now, by doing this, we just define this element to have a position of relative. So what is this? What is this relative? So one of the things that you can utilize when you declare this are the values top, Okay, for example, if you are going to uh, set here 20 pixels for the top, and that is what is going to happen. So from its original position, which was influenced by the document flow over here, all right? I mean, the document flow is if we are going to delete this one over here, uh, obviously that box should be here at the top, right? Uh, without having to do this, the top, let me delete that. It is by default over here even though we already have set some kind of value here, position relative. So by having this value over here, by having this property and this value, we should now be able to utilize uh, this uh, property top, okay, 10 pixels. Let me, let me do like uh, 50 pixels, like so. And I think we can activate the other div uh, so we can see what's going on here. So I think that's too wide. Let me put it back to probably 20. All right, so aside from top, we can go ahead and have like a left value of 20 pixels, like so, and will it will be pushed to the left, all right? 
from its original position to the left. So aside from left, you can have something like right, and it will be on the opposite direction. And of course, for the top, uh, we can have like something, a bottom, okay? If we save that, then you get that kind of effect. So without declaring the position relative over here, let me go ahead and disable that code. I save this, and as you can see, the bottom right properties don't work. So bottom property, right, and then top, uh, and then left, they're not going to work without defining this property possession relative. And that is going to be an example of an element that has a position relative. So let's create another one. Let me copy this for the absolute position. So this is an absolute box. Uh, let's change this to absolute. And we are going to target this. Let me copy that. Let me copy the height and width like so, as well as the color. But we will change this to something like green. Although we have named it absolute box, we did not yet declare the position of an element with a position of absolute, right? So for example, we are going to set here uh, like this property left, uh, let's say around uh, 100 pixels, okay? That one don't take effect, but uh, observe if we are going to paste this, but instead of relative, we're going to say absolute, okay? And if we are going to, for example, add here a property of top, uh, let's say 100 pixels as well. And right now, it is over here. All right, so what we know so far at this point is the position absolute seems to be exactly the same with relative, okay, at this point. The position absolute starts to matter if this element is inside of a container. So for example, we are going to wrap everything uh, in a div and we want to make sure that this div closing tag is right here, okay, at the last part of these three elements, opening div tag and closing tag, and we are going to name this container. So let me copy that and let's go ahead and target that over here at the top, paste the name, and for this container, we're going to set a position of relative Okay, and let's set the width to around uh, 500 pixels, maybe 300 pixels. Okay, and the height around the 300 pixels as well so that it is a square. And we will just set a border instead of a background color. So border, maybe two pixels, a solid, uh, let's say black. All right, so let me go ahead and show you this one. And for this container, I'm going to set a margin of around 50 pixels. And this brings us to the next point that I'm going to make, that the absolute position is relative. This box right here, this green box, its position right now is relative to its parent container. All right? And that container should have a defined position relative. Okay? So again... The position of this, like, well, uh, just like the static, I mean, this one is being influenced by the normal flow of the document. So regardless of what happened, this one will stay in that box because it is now within the container. Its parent is this div right here with the class of container. Same thing with the uh, relative box over here. But look what's going to happen with this absolute box if the container right over here is not positioned as relative. You see that? So this is the most important concept that you have to learn about absolute positioning. The element that is positioned as an absolute and you wanted to contain it in a div, you should set that div in to have a position of relative. Otherwise, this top left value will be relative to the entire document. So right now, this absolute box over here, the value 100 pixels from top. So for example, if we are going to set this to zero, as you can see, it is zero from top. And for the left, let's say zero as well. It is zero from top and left relative to the entire document.
or this visually available screen for the user. Notice what's going to happen if the container in which this absolute box is located, as you can see, it is actually a child of this div container, but the positioning is absolute. That is why it is positioning in relation to the entire document. But if we are going to set its parent as position relative, its position is now related to its direct parent. So for example, if I'm going to have a value here of 10 pixels from top, then we get that kind of format. Let me put it here at the side so we can see what exactly is happening. So for the left, for example, 30 pixels, and it will be pushed to the right because it is from the left, 30 pixels from the left. So that is for the absolute box. Let me, let me go ahead and uh, disable that so it will disappear. So that's for the absolute box. We already understand that. And again, a static box is just the default value for relative. Even if you are going to disable this, as you can see, the element here with the position of relative, it remains here. That's the difference between the relative positioning and absolute positioning. So for the relative box, it will still work. So for example, if I'm going to change this value 50 pixels from 20 to 50, save this and it will be pushed uh, further to the right. Even though its parent, the container div right here, don't have a specific positioning. So that's the difference between the position relative and absolute. Its position, the top left, right, bottom value will depend on its next parent that has a position defined as relative. Otherwise, it's going to relate itself to the entire document. So let me go ahead and activate this and it will respect the position of its direct parent, the container div. I hope that this has been informative for you. See you in the next one.